youtubers welcome to my channel try to sell and uh, today's project is replacing the well pressure tank and uh, I'm not saying this is the best way to do it but this is how I did it and uh, it's not too too scary to try it yourself if this video will be helpful for you don't forget at the end of it shoot me a few likes and subscribe to the channel That's the problem I have with the well pump. Well pump is short cycling. So that's the reason I'm changing the tank today. Before you install well tank, make sure that you check the air pressures on the tank. If I read it correctly from the factory, it's set up to 28 psi. Uh, but the rule is it depends the whatever water pressure you keep in your house so in in my particular situation I have cut off points 40 and 60 so the rule is you always stay two pounds below your cutoff point so the easiest way to check I mean from your car gauge if you don't have anything specific specific so I gotta double check what I have here and uh, and I actually have 38 so I don't know why it says 28 over there but yeah over here so I'm good to go it's actually pre this is actually 40 60 pretty standard but if not if whatever because it normally come preset from the factory the easiest way if you don't have a specific pump I mean I'm right now in my van I always keep my uh, air pump in here from the 12 volt cigarette charger you always can just add whatever double check with the two gauge two dollar uh, gauge and uh, you're good to go so I'm good at the air pre 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 pressurized tank now I'm good for installation so the first thing you do before you start draining the tank the old one Make sure you turn off the water pump and then as much as you can drain the water. This valve is over here. I still gonna have a few gallons left in the tank because as you can see it's not quite at the lowest point but majority of the tank I will be able to drain to drain and then I'll go from there. Yeah this valve is conveniently exactly the same size as the garden hose. So. And uh, and drop the other one in your sub pump tank. The water in the system already dropping. So even though the pressure is right at the zero, there's still plenty of water left in the tank. So this will be a little bit of a little bit messy. So prepare some towels, bucket, and we're gonna now to disconnect. We'll disconnect the tank. So use towels to kind of trap the water so we wouldn't go against the wall and try to control so it would come over here towards you and uh, we'll see and this thing supposedly you should be able to just unscrew by hand we'll see how that gonna go yeah looks like I'm gonna have to have a wrench well, I'm gonna go to a plan B, since I'm not gonna be able to reuse this joint anyway, I'm gonna have to cut it, so... Thank you. 
unfortunately water there's low towards the sub pump tank so I even don't have to use these towels it's just gonna go slowly over there while the water is still draining it's taking quite a bit of time do you see this black thing is over here on the floor that's the chunks of the uh, diaphragm that actually uh, looks like give up a little bit and uh, at least in one spot yeah there is a over here it just draining from the side how this tank is built is actually half of it the bottom half is water the upper half is air and over here there's a rubber I'm guessing somewhere this weld line there's a rubber diaphragm and that's what create the pressure in your house and basically uh, this uh, when you pump the water inside the tank it squeezes the air air creates the pressure and you have constant water flow in your faucets well the expectancy life expectancy of those things about five to seven years but it it actually fluctuates a little bit depends on the usage if you have like sprinklers and whatever so you gotta make sure that you have the right size well tank you know so you wouldn't have to change this thing every five years you know if you can uh, spend some more money to get a, a little bit bigger tank you know you don't have to do this quite as often so this tank is 44 gallons and I will be installing 52 gallons, a little bit bigger than this one. Here's a few more signs of the bad water tank. Look at this. Um, particles that come in more and more, not just rubber, but over here. See this? Um, all kinds of stuff that got trapped in there and possibly that's what you know pretty much all these particles are pretty much I think was part of the why this right here another one came out why this rubber diaphragm got ruined look at the right here see another little piece came out Yeah, see this color right there. The water is not as clear. It's actually coming from the upper part of the tank, from the above the rubber diaphragm. And um, when the water will drain, I actually will. Uh, there's a few ways, a couple of ways to check if the tank is fine without actually punching a hole in there. And check out this stuff. That was inside the tank. That's the stuff that was inside the tank. Check out the color of this water. <laughs> That's a sign of the bad thing. Yeah, I'm not sure if you could see it from the from up there, but check out the color. Do you see the color? Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, I'm not quite sure. Maybe Dr. Pepper. That's it. So the tank supposedly empty, and here's the. So at this point, here's the easiest way to actually confirm. I mean, by the color of this water, you can tell that the tank is bad. But here's the easiest way. Listen to this.
it's not a lot but do you hear this water that's inside the tank and now to like 100% confirmation is actually I gonna check the pressure if you remember on the new one was supposed to be 38 let's see what is on this one there's nothing zero zero I mean just to confirm that look see there's no air at all so that diaphragm is gone I mean I don't know how big hole but what was happening the water actually was at, at the beginning slipping through the crack inside this rubber barrier and going up in there to the point that it's, it's eventually water filled up to the very top and the water pump when it was pushing you know obviously it doesn't have enough power <laughs> to squeeze the, to squeeze the water so I mean the pump was turning in what for two seconds and it's showing that's it tank is full you get your 60 psi so the water drained to the 40 drops like basically and pop I mean if you don't replace tank at that point you're gonna kill your pump really soon surprisingly though when you google the reason for short, uh, uh, well pump short cycling the first result maybe just for me popped that you have plugged uh, filter or water line or whatever but again I'm not a professional but this is happening you know uh, the second time to me uh, every time you uh, have a, a short cycling your uh, water pump this is uh, that I mean the first choice I mean the reason for the one inch or one and a quarter of whatever you're using uh, uh, pipe would plugged in before this thing I mean it's again not professional but my uh, opinion it's minimal so that's that's the problem with this tank now we're gonna install the new one this tank a little bit different than the previously was installed I mean size is for once so uh, it's actually not gonna fit uh, or it, it might it, it could have fit in the same spot but it would be too tight to the wall and actually this thing could collect some moisture on it so I wanna give a little space and because um, this tank sits one inch higher than the original one so I'm gonna have to cut one inch out of this uh, original PVC pipe put a coupling over there and since it's gonna be cut I actually gonna turn it 45 degree and it's gonna be sitting kinda like this so at this point I'm just gonna have to do uh, careful measurements cut everything and cement it so that's that's the next step to cut PVC pipe you can use any saw you have in your household you cut it just make sure you clean the edges with your Stanley knife or if you have a sandpaper I mean it doesn't have to be super pretty the thread of the tank is actually of the elbow uh, stainless steel elbow has inch and a half inch and a quarter uh, thread but all of the piping in this house is one inch so I'm gonna have to do a little adapter like this I'm gonna have to get the tags off and now we're gonna do 
use the cement and primer. I know there's some professionals using clear primer. I am not. And why I uh, I like purple? Because purple you actually can see if you miss the spot or not. So, but that's just me. This is actually really easy, you know, to glue uh, uh, PVC pipes using cement. If you do it right, super easy and last. I mean, almost forever. If you do it without any shortcuts you know you're not gonna have any problems doing it so dip it in the primer and just do make sure you don't miss any spots like that and then you do the same thing on your pipe. Let it dry for a little bit. When you use primer you have about 10 to 20 minutes I think they say uh, until the primer you're gonna have to reapply so after you apply primer you're um, good for about you know I'd say 10 minutes so when this is drying, you're going to apply cement. Basically, same thing, just do a round. That way, you know, you're not going to miss it. Make sure you do it on both sides. When you did, you push and twist and hold. Because if you're not going to hold it, you're actually going to push it out. Hold it for, I don't know, five seconds really. Let it bite. That's it. So after that I'm gonna do the primer on this side. When it's on the outside you actually can churn it and do the other side. The pipe Unless you use some kind of special coupling, normally goes in at one inch. So, you know, your primer may be just a little bit more than that, but you don't really have to. Okay. Now I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. And I'm gonna apply cement. See, it takes just a little bit. Now it's dry.
just like that. Push and twist a little bit. Hold. We're gonna do the other side. Same deal. Push, twist, and hold. Five seconds if you're not sure. Ten seconds that's going to be 100% sure. Okay. So this side is done. So the bottom of the tank has a metal elbow with the thread. So I already measured the necessary length for me. Um, and uh, there is a few different ways I guess how you can attach it. But my preferred choice, I've done it before it worked for me. Use two layers of Teflon tape and then this paste on top of it. And it seemed to work for me. Uh, I already did uh, well two things. This is going to be my third and then some other project with a PVC thread. Uh, this you could you could buy it. Uh, can jar or whatever like this or you can buy it in a tube see this one already almost empty so uh, that's what I called Harvey's TFE Harvey's TFE paste right here superior quality pipe thread compound I mean there is a few different kind but uh, I think this is maybe one of the cheapest one but it still works So when you put the tip on tape, make sure you put it against the thread when you're going to be churning it in, righty tighty, it wouldn't unroll. So when you use a Teflon tape, you start, uh, let me see, so it would be in, in the from the very edge and go slowly towards the towards the end and uh, it may, may seems that more is better and one time I actually tried it and put four layers of this stuff of the Teflon tape and actually I had a little drips so after I got this tape on this this uh, when you're gonna open this um, paste you actually gonna have to mix it up if you're not using it often uh, it has a little like a separation I don't know what whatever this thing is um, whatever this um, material is made well it looks like two uh, different components at least two so that's what you yeah obviously it's a little bit easier to, to go with a tape with a with the tube instead of this that way it's not as messy but uh, it doesn't matter it has a it has a brush over here so I mean whatever your preferences is you don't have to put too much of this stuff 
but make, make sure you have a continuous bead of this paste. Try not to get inside the the pipe. like so so right there it doesn't look maybe too pretty but that's how you do it you slide through the hole make sure you get the thread it should go actually really easy so don't force it you gotta Make sure you got the when you do it on angle like that it yeah it's right uh nope Right there, you got it on the thread, and now you just twist. It should go fairly easy. And when you have to, at the very end, you know, use your pliers to actually get it all the way. Just like that. So we're done with this part. Now you're gonna have to be careful when you when you're gonna put it because see this stand is actually loose. So I wouldn't crack this thing. It's a little bit tricky to cut vertically. It's an old pipe. I'm gonna use sandpaper to clear off some of this dirt or whatever this is. Okay, now so I wouldn't forget on this union coupling make sure you slide this knot over before you glue this part off on and now we we'll repeat the same steps
push and twist. Gotta hold it just a little bit longer. I started to push it apart. I don't know if you noticed that on the camera. I don't know if it if it caught it. So it's better safe to hold 10 seconds. There you go. Push and turn. And now the last piece. Make sure I didn't miss a spot. So now I have it set a good distance from the wall, got the height, exactly the same, all I have to do just tie this knot, make sure that this rubber seal on this side is sitting properly in the groove, and that's that. Just like that. Well, they say do it by hand, but maybe I'm not strong enough, so just a little bit. With a wrench, and that's it. Project done, but now, before I actually uh, start running the water, I gotta let it dry for two hours before it sets. Two hours later, moment of truth. You gotta wait until this cement, PVC cement, dries for two hours. And after two hours, this pipe should with, uh, withstand 150 pounds of pressure. So, okay. Forgot that I already. Got this. So at this point, you gotta make sure you open all of the faucets or in your house so you gotta drain because now you have a whole lot of air in the system and uh, now the water pump is going to be pushing but uh, right there you can see the difference you can see the difference that pump I mean the tank is empty actually so we're gonna take a little bit 
And uh, another thing is just to see if there's going to be any water leak. So at this point, no, not even a drop. So that part is success. And uh, well, I, I guess I'm going to see until that tank is going to be full, reaches to that 60 pound per uh, square inch pound until the pump will cut out and another thing you have to remember if it, there's a, a there is a rule about the pump if you open all the faucets any water outlet in your house the pump when it reaches like in this case cut out point 60 pounds and then cut in 40 pounds so if you have every faucet in your house open so from the point when the pump is cut out to the point when the pressure drops to 40 that it should be at, around at least or around minute and a half so if it's less than that you need a bigger tank basically that's so so that's the rule because normally if the tank is small and there is a formula I don't have it with me right now but you can google it if I mean obviously if you have a good tank you know you don't have to throw it away but if you if you notice that pump is actually you can run a test like this open all of the faucets and it the, the uh, pump cycle is going to be less than minute and a half or break between cycles going to be less than minute and a half make sure you put a bigger tank next time so uh yeah at this point i gotta wait until you're gonna fill out all of the faucets draining all of the air so right now i have faucets open and the pump is still pushing at this point so now i just wait Okay, a little bit more than 60. And now see how slowly, I mean, I don't have a timer on me. But right now I have maybe almost all of the faucets is on. So now it's just gonna drop down slowly until it reaches the 40 pounds. right there so the pump is kicked in it was about two minutes and a little bit more so you can see that's how it's supposed to work I mean obviously I wasn't holding the camera all those two minutes just to to see this arrow falling smoothly down but that's that's how this project is done basically the biggest thing you check in right now for any leaks drops even if it's a minimal nothing is dry I already check under the tank I mean you're not gonna be able to see it from here but I look through that little tiny hole in the front so that's how I replaced this well tank if this video was useful for you Shoot me a like and don't forget subscribe to the channel.